going to put on our uh, thinking hats here today. We've got to engineer something from scratch. I have been, <laughs> I bought, when I started knife making, this was one of the first tool purchases that I made was this Milwaukee Porta Band. Now this beautiful machine allows me to cut steel every shape and it's a very versatile machine. I just, I, I've really enjoyed it and I've done a lot, a lot of cutting with this thing. I have since, or just recently, got a battery powered, a DeWalt one, the 20 volt max, which for fabbing is really, really nice. I can carry it around. So I want to dedicate this one now to a fixed position. I've already went and purchased a foot, a foot controller for it because it just has a switch. So I used to just uh, clamp that, but now I have a zip tie. I have a foot control, but ever since I bought this machine, when I need to use it, I pull it out, clamp it in my soft jaw vise here on my woodworking bench. And that's getting tiring for a couple reasons. One, it often stays here because I don't want to take it in and out of my bench. So it stays here and then it eats up bench space. If I want to put something longer here, it just makes it clumsy getting around this corner of my bench. And it takes up my woodworking vise here. And when I do remove it, I put it away on a shelf. And then when I do need it for a little cut, I've got to pull it up and clamp it in and plug it in. It's just a real nuisance. So I want this to have its own dedicated place to sit where I can use it, where I can walk over, stand, stand on that foot pedal and make a little cut, whether it be a piece of pin stock or whatever. I just want a permanent fixed position. These bodies aren't designed to be fixed position devices. So we've got to do a little bit of engineering. There are products out there you can buy to do this. They're pricey and I don't want to spend the 400 plus bucks for this, for this old machine here. So I have these rusty pieces, the biggest and heaviest piece of flat plate that I have. This is I believe 3 sixteenths. This was a, a furnace baffle plate. It's a little bit hard, a little bit tough drilling because it's been heated. But I think that's what we can make a small table. I'm not interested in a big table for this. Some people will get uh, the, the tables for these so that they have a big table. I have no use for that. I've never desired that for this. I just want a way to mount this, preferably on a wall. I would like to make a bracket so this thing can screw on a wall here somewhere and stay plugged in. But uh, the only way I can see to do that is just attach it to a plate through this top panel. Rough edge there, we did a plasma cut some time ago, so we'll carve that off. And of course, we'll have to clean this up, but I'm thinking we will go a little bit wider. Maybe we'll go uh, two inches this side. <clears throat> Maybe two inches that side. A little section of plate. This will sit in here. We'll use this hole. We have a screw here. Maybe we'll drill this. Put a screw, a couple screw points here. That's how uh, the manufacturer wants. That's how they mount these. So we're going to try to do it the same thing. A bracket into a wall plate, some angle iron maybe. We're just going to be using scraps here today. So two bolts recessed in the table, stock table of the machine. I could have did this years ago to have a bigger table, but I never ever had a need for a bigger table. But now all our bracketry and everything will fab off of this plate. So I'm thinking some type of arm back here extending to behind the machine with a flat plate to the wall. Okay, that'll be lovely. Of course we'll clean this all up, deburr it, smooth it all out nice. As a, as a nice work surface later, but for right now, 
we have our fit up, everything's perfect. They ended up having to burn a little hole in that uh, little tiny table there. I just, I didn't have a bit that could drill it. It was too hard to steal. If they would contribute their land, together as 50-50 partners, we build a great new residential and office building on this incredible site. He was skeptical that I'd get the zoning necessary to build the huge building I had in mind, but he'd also seen what I'd achieved with the Commodore. Now I know angle iron here is not going to be the best look, a piece of flat plate with a full weld around it would look nicest, but I just can't use up <laughs> that last piece of 3 16 plate that I cut this out of. That is the last I have and I just can't bear to use that up for this project. Not when a piece of angle iron will do just as good a job, even though it may not look quite as good. Um, we're gonna go with it. We're gonna go with angle iron. Because it'll do a great job, just as good a job, um, but we won't use up our nice piece of plate. And angle iron is a lot cheaper and easier to source. The 140 is not rated to TIG weld plate this heavy. But I'm already hooked up to the Argon. The TIG torch and everything is what's connected because I've been just practicing some, some flat runs on uh, just some flat plate. So I can't help but wonder what'll happen. <laughs> couldn't not try it. It is way too cold. Just very, very slow. There it is, Matt and Michael. My very first uh, TIG welds on a plate that's way too heavy for the machine. She's only rated for eighth inch plate. And this is uh, 3 sixteenths. Mm, yeah, that's 3 sixteenths plate. Maybe even a little heavier than that. So, too cold. It's too cold. It's uh, you just kind of hold it there and wait for the metal to, to warm into a pool, but still very cool to get to try it. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more. That's, that's just too much fun. TIG weld number two of all time. Super slow, really hard to get uh, the metal to flow anywhere because you can't get the base material hot enough. So you're just sort of melting this. It, I'm, I'm closer to bronzing here at this point. Watch how cool this is. One machine. That quickly the TIG is unhooked. And here it is, it should be pretty much done, pending any adjustments or anything like that, but this is exactly what I had in mind. Clean and simple, I just hope it gives me a solid 
and a feel. That's our flux core weld there we did on that plate. Pleased with that. We couldn't get it on the inside, but that, that's more than strong enough. This is quarter inch angle, 3 16 flat plate here. Plenty of strong. I actually didn't add any weld here on this plate. Maybe I'll need to, maybe this will break up, but I didn't want to cover up those TIG welds or draw from it. I could have ran, maybe I will put a couple, a little stitch right there and a little stitch right there, but uh, I didn't want to cover up those first TIG welds because I'm just, I, I'm really proud of them. I know that <laughs> they're pretty junky TIG welds, but uh, that's a big step for me to be able to do a, a TIG weld like that on an actual project, not just practicing on, on old scrap material on, on flat surfaces. That's a, that's a big step this year. Okay, it needs to be able to go in here. This would be very easily removed as well. I'd be able to leave this on the wall and slip the machine right out of this, I'll bet. Solid on the bracket. Now, whether and this is attached to the wall. I may at some point, we'll see when we do some testing, but there may be too much play this way since it's out a long ways with a single point. I may have to do a, a span out like this, the bracket, so it doesn't have as much of this, if it has some, and I think it will. Oh, that looks great. The fit from the wall, very solid up and down. I can still get at the controls on the back if I need to. The only thing that's not really suitable is just like I expected. Because it's out there, it does have a bit more side to side than I want. So I'm gonna have to put in a, a plate extending, maybe a piece of bar stock or something out here to another wall mount. And that will give this bar some some extra rigidity. A bracket that looks something like that. <laughs> what do you think? Oh yeah, just put that back. Look at that. Move the buffer out of here so we got lots of room now to get in here. It also gives us a lot more room at the metal drill press here. And here's what we have here. Of course our plate with our arm coming out and then a supporting bracket. But it's uh, it's quite solid as you can see. There is the, the plate that we mounted onto is an adjustable plate. It's a dovetail type or like a clasp type system like this with a bar going through it. So there is a little bit of slop in that, but you won't be bothering with that because this is the table and this is the blade and you're not going to get the blade to move enough to move the saw. So, so it's there, very solid, a lot more solid even than it was clamped in the vise here. And it's always set up, which is really, really nice. Just really thrilled with that. Didn't cost us a dime, just scrap plate we had around. And then I bought that foot pedal, which is cheap. So I can just walk right over now for those quick little jobs. No more grabbing, pulling out the tool and getting it up here and having it in the way and, and stuff like that. It has its own spot where it's going to live. Might get a few darts, judging by my darts rolling so far. We might put a few darts in through there, but that's okay. She can take it. Really thrilled. If you're looking to make one for yourself, you have one of these. Um, as you can see, two mounting points. All we have to do. We used an existing hole and we drilled one in the table there. Very simple. After that, you can kind of craft whatever you want. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel to come back for more shop improvements and knife making. We're all, we're all set up here once again. Those little tweaks, man, make all the difference here in the shop. Just really proud of what we're putting together. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.